The Sand Snakes. Oberyn Martell's daughters in the show and in the books are very different breeds of serpent. These are angsty warrior women copied and pasted three times, while these are a diverse array of fighters, schemers, and poisoners, each one representing a different facet of Oberyn's personality. These are the real Sand Snakes. Nobody prefers the show versions, so instead let me know in the comments if you like the book versions, and why. In Season 4, Oberyn mentions his eight bastard daughters. His paramour Ilaria Sand is the mother of the youngest four. We know the name of four Sand Snakes. We meet Obara, Nymeria, and Tyene in Season 5, but we also hear of one Elia Sand. According to Oberyn, she's a difficult girl. In King's Landing, he tells Cersei that he named her after his late sister, a name that invokes sad rage, thus presumably creating tension between father and daughter. So basically, this off-screen character is the best written Sand Snake in the entire show. The infamous trio appear in Season 5. Obara Sand is the eldest daughter. She's an archetypal warrior woman, skilled with a spear and dressed in masculine leather armour. She gives a speech explaining that Oberyn claimed her and took her to court when she was but a child. He tossed a spear at her feet, pointed to her crying mother, and told her to choose her weapon. She chose the spear and joined Oberyn at court. The second-born daughter is Nymeria Sand. According to an interview with the actress, Nymeria's mother was an Eastern noblewoman who died in battle, but not before teaching her how to handle her weapon of choice, the whip. <laughs> the same interview claims she's the strategic, calculating one. Not that we ever see that on screen, but there we go. Unlike her older sister Obara, she wears flowing dresses, but still encapsulates the warrior woman vibe. The youngest of the triad is Tyene Sand. Okay, you know what? I was wrong. The, the show snakes are better. Her weapons of choice are two long, poison-tipped daggers. Unlike the brutish Obara and the apparently calculating Nymeria, Tyene is overconfident and feisty and flirtatious or something. They all have different mothers, and Tyene's mother is Ilaria Sand, the bastard paramour of Oberyn. She joins him in King's Landing in Season 4, having fun with him in brothels and providing moral support during the fight, which he then loses. Fueled by grief and vengeance, Alaria returns to Dawn and schemes with the Sand Snakes. They are furious at Oberyn's death and Duran's apathy. Alaria believes the Dornish should rise up against the Lannisters, and that Princess Marcella, who was sent to Dawn by Tyrion as a match for Tristane Martell, should be harmed in retribution. Alaria and the Sand Snakes plot to kidnap Marcella, perhaps to kill her, perhaps to push the Lannisters to invade and force Duran to raise troops in defence. They are pushed into action when they discover that Jaime Lannister has been smuggled into Dawn to snatch Myrcella himself, and take her back to King's Landing. The captain who smuggled Jaime tries to sell this information to Obama, oh, Obama. <laughs> tries to smuggle this information to Obara, who buries him up to his neck in sand, and throws a spear through his head, uh, because she's cool and badass. The kidnapping plot unfolds, but Jaime Lannister and Bronn are already there. Book Bronn never actually goes to Dawn, as you can learn in this video. They engage in the greatest fight scene in the history of television. Nymeria with her whip just... <laughs> they are surrounded and captured by Duran's household guard, led by Aereo Hotar, but not before Tyene nicks Bronn with her poisoned blade. The Sand Snacks are locked in a cell opposite Bronn to await Duran's judgement. They're slapping hands, they're slapping faces, they're stripping, it's wild down there. Tyene starts to toy with Bronn like an animal toying with its food, flirting with him to increase his heart rate and trigger the effects of the poison, the long farewell. She only rescues him with an antidote when he tells her she's the most beautiful woman in the world. Ilaria is brought before Duran and Tristane. She does not hide her hateful feelings. She refuses to drink a toast to Tommen, calls Jaime Kingslayer, and Duran spineless. But then she changes her tune. She pledges her allegiance to Duran under threat of death, exchanges kind words with Jamie, and kisses Marcella goodbye as she leaves Dawn. Tyene gives a personal goodbye to Bronn, telling him that although he wants a good girl, he needs an inadequate feline. The kiss proves to be fatal, and Marcella drops down dead, poisoned by the long farewell. Now for the books, specifically the fourth and the fifth books. The eight Sand Snakes and the Song of Ice and Fire are named. Obara, Nymeria, Tyene, and Sorella have different mothers, while Elia, Obella, Doria, and Loreza are the daughters of Ilaria Sand. As in the show, the eldest three are the main focus. All want to avenge Oberyn's death at the hands of the mountain, but in different ways. Rather than being three discount Xena warrior princesses, each Sand Snake represents a different aspect of their father. Obara is the most similar to her show counterpart, representing the martial side of Oberyn. 
She's a big-boned, spear-wielding warrior who prefers masculine clothing, and the daughter of an old town prostitute. Her speech in the show is taken from the books. She chose Oberyn over her mother, who drank herself to death a year later. The Marshal Obara wants to avenge her father by raising an army and sacking Old Town, while her younger sister Nymeria will take King's Landing. Duran, of course, rejects this. Nymeria is the beautiful, willowy, and graceful daughter of a Volantine noblewoman. She represents the cunning and sexual side of her father. In fact, she was abed with both of the female Fowler twins when news came of Oberyn's death. To avenge him, she offers to carry out a series of assassinations with her sister, Tyeen. The victims would be Tywin, Cersei, Jaime, and Tommen. She is also rejected by Duran. Tyene is the blonde, blue-eyed daughter of a scepter. Despite her innocent persona, she shares Oberyn's aptitude for poisons. She wants to avenge her father by crowning Myrcella to provoke the Lannisters and Tyrells into invading Dawn, where they would be crushed. Again, Duran rejects her. It's worth mentioning the fourth and most mysterious Sand Snake, Sorella, the daughter of a Summer Islander captain. She is not currently in Dawn. On an unrelated note, there's an acolyte of the Citadel called Alarus the Sphinx. Yes, he's half Dornish and half Summer Islander. Yes, he has Oberyn's widow's peak and intellect. Yes, his name happens to be Sorella backwards, but that's just a coincidence. What are you, some kind of conspiracy theorist? The fifth is Elia Sand, the eldest daughter of Ilaria Sand also known as Lady Lance due to her fondness for jousting. She inhabits the wildness of her father's personality. To appease the Iron Throne, Duran has his rebellious bastard nieces arrested. Obara, Nymeria, and Tyene are locked up in the Spear Tower, while Elia, Obella, Loria, and Loreza are detained in the Water Gardens with their mother. Prince Duran's daughter, Ariane Martel, is inspired by Tyene and launches her own doomed plot to crown Myrcella. Ariane grew up with the Sand Snakes, she played with Nymeria, travelled with Sorella, danced with Tyene. In fact, she's closest to Tyene, sharing men with her and once even attempting to flee with her to Highgarden to marry Willis Tyrell. Oberyn stopped them, of course. Meanwhile, Alarus earns a copper link in his chain, which represents the study of history. Archmaester Marwyn of the Higher Mysteries tasks her with looking after Sam Tarly in Old Town. After Ariane's plot is foiled, the Sand Snakes are eventually released. Obara is sent to hunt down the rogue knight Darkstar after he wounded Princess Marcella, while Nymeria and Tyene are sent to King's Landing, the former to join the Small Council, the latter to disguise herself as a scepter and gain the confidence of the High Sparrow. The character of Ilaria Sand is worth noting. She does not inspire or collude with the Sand Snakes. When the Mountain Skull is delivered to Sunspear, she speaks out against the lust for violent revenge. Where does it end, she asks. After all, Tywin, Amory Lorch, Gregor Clegane, the men behind Elia Martell's murder, they are all dead. She rejects the destructiveness of revenge that permeates A Song of Ice and Fire. Unlike the bitter Ilaria of the show, which brings us back to Season 6 and 7 of Keeping Up with the Sandashians, Duran's actor Alexander Siddig stated that he was contracted for four episodes of Season 6, and yet he died in the first. Clearly, the negative backlash to Season 5's Dawn plot caused some last-minute changes, hopefully for the better. And weak men will never rule Dawn again. Oh, god damn it! With Marcella dead, Ilaria and the Sand Snakes enact their meticulously planned coup. Ilaria plunges her blade into Duran's heart, while Tyene, whose hair has grown remarkably in the span of a few days, shanks Aerio Hotar with a letter opener and no-scopes the fleeing maester. The guards glare angrily and do nothing to help the prince, who they previously worked for to stop the Sand Snake's previous plan because they're, uh, they're angry, they're mad at him. I, d I don't know what's going on. Meanwhile, Obara and Nymeria are dispatched to assassinate Tristane before he reaches King's Landing. They give him an offer of who to fight, and naturally he picks the woman with the whip. What was her plan? Fortunately for her, Obara steps in and stabs Tristane through the back of the head. Mirroring the Martel sigil. A spear through the sun, get it? Yeah, very nice. It's funny that people complained about Alaria's characterization, as well as the poorly written and awkwardly acted Sand Snakes, and yet the response was to make Alaria even more horrible, the Sand Snakes even more annoying, Shut up about Mama! and to kill off the three characters that people didn't even have a problem with. Anyway, the girl bosses take over Dawn, somehow, and secure an alliance with Daenerys Targaryen. Along with Varys, they persuade Olena Tyrell to join their cause, but not before she absolutely roasts them. In Season 6, Ilaria Sand attends Daenerys' War Council, representing Dawn. Presumably, she's the Princess of Dawn now, but it's never actually stated. 
Anyway, the vengeful Ilaria insults Tyrion and argues in favour of Danny attacking King's Landing immediately. Instead, the Martell and Tyrell forces are sent to besiege the city, transported by Yara Greyjoy's Iron Fleet. Ilaria and the Sand Snakes travel on Yara's ship. Obara and Nymeria mock Tyene, while Ilaria and Yara Greyjoy nearly redeem the entire Dornish plot. But they're interrupted by Euron Greyjoy and his fleet. Obara and Nymeria take on the Crow's Eye himself. The Ironborn King disarms Obara, breaks her spear in half, and impales her with them. Nymeria's prowess with a whip isn't enough to defeat him either, and Euron strangles her to death. Ilaria and Tyene are captured. They're paraded through the streets of King's Landing by Euron, and thrown into the black cells of the Red Keep. Cersei devises a cruelly ironic revenge, giving a poisonous kiss to Tyene and pledging to keep Ilaria alive to watch her daughter decompose before her eyes. It kinda goes hard. Thus ends the Sand Snakes, and Ilaria herself likely dies when the Red Keep is destroyed. But what awaits the Sand Snakes in the Winds of Winter? Obara has been sent to face Sir Gerald Dane with Aerio Hotar and Sir Balon Swan. She may die at the hands of this anime villain, or maybe she'll forge an alliance with him. After all, they both want to bring war to the Lannisters. Nymeria will soon join the small council, using her skills to spy and plot and manipulate, perhaps driving the crown into further chaos. Of course, if Dawn sides with the invading Aegon Targaryen, who you can learn more about here, Lady Nim may be executed by the Lannisters. Or perhaps she'll be assassinated by Varys in a deliberate attempt to cause chaos and push Dawn into Aegon's hands. Tyene, meanwhile, will be infiltrating the Faith. Her obsession with poison is not subtle. The question is, who will she poison in King's Landing? The High Septon himself? Or perhaps King Tommen to avenge Oberyn? If we accept the outlandish conspiracy that Alaras is Sorella in disguise, she may help defend Old Town against Ironborn invaders, utilising her prowess with a bow. As Sam's protector, she may even play a larger role, helping him in the fight against the White Walkers. Lady Lance herself, Elia Sand, appears in a Winds of Winter sample chapter, accompanying Ariane on her trip to John Connington. She's wild, insubordinate, and flirts with both Sir Joss Hood and Sir Garibald Shells. There are some theories that she may seduce Aegon before Ariane and scupper any chance of a Dornish alliance. Only one thing is for certain. Vengeance and destruction begets vengeance and destruction. And if the Sand Snakes of the show and the books have anything in common, it will likely be a grisly fate. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe to Fantasy Haven if you enjoy animated A Song of Ice and Fire lore. If you're interested in exclusive content such as the History of House Dane and other perks, feel free to check out the Fantasy Haven Patreon. You can also support the channel by checking out the merchandise at fantasyhavenmerch.com. The links are in the description below. To watch the real Bron, check out this video. Special thanks to my Lord of Light patrons, Andre, Alex the Pagan, Caden, Coleshot, and Devcole. Let me know in the comments which characters I should explore next. See you next time.